Hello everybody, welcome to KubeCon. Thank you for stopping by our booth. In this session, I'd like to cover how Replicated supports the use of Helm charts to deliver into private customer control environments. So let's get started. First, let's go over what we're gonna to cover today. So first, I'd like to spend a minute on Helm. Just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page when it comes to Helm. Then we're gonna talk about how Replicated supports Helm, and then we'll get into a demo. So a minute on Helm. Let's start with the basic question that everybody may have. Well, some of you, what is Helm? So what Helm allows you to do is if you have a Kubernetes application, instead of writing manifests, you can use Helm to manage and define uh, how the application is going to be installed and how it's going to get upgraded. So again, it's, it's about a, your Kubernetes application. If we go back a little back in history, back to 2015, Helm started as what is known today as Helm Classic. It's a day's project that began in 2015 and was introduced at the very first KubeCon. Then the following year, uh, it was the project was merged with a GCS tool called Kubernetes Deployment Manager, and that led to Helm 2.0, which is uh, one of the more popular versions that was adopted. And then in 2018, it was promoted as a Kubernetes sub-project to a full-fledged uh, CNCF project. And then in 2019, Helm 3 was released, which removed Tiller, and graduated as a CNCF project in April of 2020. Now, why are software companies using Helm? For software companies that need to deliver into private control customer environments, Helm provides them with a single binary to deploy the applications. Well, single binary in that it contains all the instructions in a single file. So it's similar to giving um, an MSI or something like that. It's kind of similar. Um, there's also a built-in mechanism to handle the end user configuration. The end user may want to provide connection to their LDAP, maybe connection to a database, uh, default credentials, and so forth. So Helm provides a mechanism for that. And lastly, it is widely adopted in the community. So if you have customers asking you for Kubernetes applications, chances are they know Helm. Now, what are the challenges with Helm? So the challenges come when uh, companies are trying to operationalize delivering Kubernetes application into those private customer controlled environments. The first one is that single binary only contains uh, templating and manifest, that create manifest. It does not contain the images. So you have to deliver the images a separate way. It also requires Kubernetes to be there in place and as well, of course, Helm. The built-in mechanism to enter your LDAP information or your database connections and so forth does require the end user to edit a YAML file or provide them as parameters on the command line. So those are kind of error prone, especially if these are not very technical folks. And lastly, while this uh, can be a good thing that is widely adopted in the community, it also means that uh, we're curious people. So it means we're probably going to take your Helm chart, open it up and probably make some changes, uh, improve it, quote unquote, and uh, then we'll use our own forked version. And that can be a challenge then for, uh, for updates and things down the line. So how does Replicated support Helm? How do we address those challenges? So you don't have to change your process when it comes to Replicated. You can still use Helms to package your application. Those Helm charts can be part of an application release in Replicated. But the, instead of your end users editing YAML or providing uh, runtime information in a command line field, we can provide a configuration fields for them to enter that information. And as mentioned, we use Helm in the back uh, to deploy your application. So again, your Helm chart will be used uh, with all the Helm logic, like Helm hooks and things like that, that you may have already put into your Helm chart. Last thing is that uh, you can add multiple Helm charts in Replicated, and you can specify the order of deployment. So which Helm chart should be deployed first. So now let's go over and switch over to a demo, shall we? So I'm gonna switch over to the vendor portal. And again, we talk about Replicated and what Replicated does for software companies is we help you with uh, your customers that want to run your application in their private control environments that they control. So we help you with uh, creating a tool, uh, the App Manager uh, Admin Console, that allows you and customer and admin to deploy and maintain that application. So I created my first application and then I'm going to get me a Helm chart. So I'm going to uh, come here. As you can see, I have a Helm chart open, I have the WordPress Helm chart. I went to Bitnami, GitHub repository, cloned it, and I have opened the folder for WordPress. And here I'm just showing you some of the files that are in this Helm chart. So now what we're going to do is we're going to package this up using the command line. So I'm gonna switch over here to the terminal and I'm gonna run Helm 
package, and then period. So yeah, I'm in the same directory as the taproot chart.yaml. So that created the targc, which is the Helm chart we're going to use. So now I'm going to go back over to the vendor portal where I created my replicated WordPress application. And I'm going to switch over to the releases screen here. And I'm going to create a release from the UI. Note that we also have a command line interface, so you could do this through a CI process as well. When you create a release through the UI, you get a Hello World application. It uses an Nginx deployment. Uh, I'm going to delete those files because we're not going to utilize that. And also to make the installation quicker, I'm going to delete other files to make the installation even more lightweight. So um, I'm going to keep the config in, in that YAML. I'm going to open the folder where my Helm chart is, and I'm going to drag and drop it into this screen right here. So here I'm going to be given two options. I'm going to choose native Helm. This is what we will do when it comes to deploying the application in the customer environment. We want to use Helm just in case we included any specific Helm features in our chart. The other option would simply templatize all the manifest and then do something like keep control apply on all the files. So as you can see in the chart YAML, uh, Replicator will open your chart, go into the chart YAML, gather the uh, chart name, the version, and create a file. It's the WordPress YAML file that you see at the bottom. And that file tells Replicator about the Helm chart. Now what I want to do is I'm going into the values file because I want to start mapping a field. So this is the values file that your end user would have to modify. Or this is the field that they would have to provide as a parameter on the command line if they want to change the default file, the default value. So with this deployment, I want to modify two values. I want to overwrite two values. It's going to be the WordPress plug name. And I also want to overwrite a port because my environment uh, has this port already in use, the one that WordPress wants to use, port 80. So one of these values, I'm going to have the user override. And the other value, this one, I'm going to override it so it's always the same value. So to do that, I'm going to go back to, uh, well, first let's create the field for the the one that we want the user to modify. So the config YAML, it's a sample configuration screen. It's based on that Hello World application. So it has some ingress and Nginx fields. So I'm going to delete the first one and I'm going to repurpose this text field. And I'm going to use the same name as the values, as the field in the values file. And I'm going to use the same name, just make it more readable here for the title. The title is the label, is what we'll show to the end user. So here we want to you know, capitalize things, use spaces, things like that. Uh, yeah, I'll leave the, the help text, why not? But this, uh, this the when is makes the, the feel only visible under certain circumstances. In this case, we want it to be visible all the time. So we'll I'll remove that line. Okay, so now let's map uh, the, the, the values override. So we go back to this WordPress YAML again. This is the file that Replicated created when I dragged and dropped the chart into here. And it tells Replicated about the Helm chart. And in the value section, I can override the default values that are in the values file. So here's the field. Uh, since this field was at the root of that file, it wasn't indented at all. It's indented under values only once, right? Uh, so here we're going to put a uh, REPL. And this is just, uh, you know, go templating here. And by the way, we do support Sprig functions as well if you want to have more advanced logic. So here I'm referencing the values for WordPress blog name, and the value is going to be whatever the user is going to enter in that UI field. Now for the service, um, I'm going to override this with a hard-coded value to 8080. So if we deploy the open source Helm chart, it will be running on port 80. But when you deploy with replicated, the port will be 8080. Okay. So let me just uh, kind of double check this before uh, we make all this, all the changes. Final. So the blog name looks good. And then the port. And again, notice how the, the these two fields start at the beginning, right? Uh, they're not indented at all. Service uh, and then port. So the indentation is important. Um, with any YAML. Uh, so now we go into the, this, this replicated-app YAML is, uh, you enter here configuration for the admin console that your end customer will use to deploy the application. This admin console will be used to deploy the application, but also manage things like updates, backup restore, things like that, usual administrative tasks. So I'm going to change the status informer that tells uh, the, the admin when the app is ready. And I'm also going to change this ports. This ports section 
uh, it allows Replicator, when they close your application, to either do a port forward or expose another port. Uh, in this case, I'm entering the port 8080, which is the port I'm overriding for WordPress. So I think we, we have everything now. So I'm going to go ahead and um, click on Save My Release here. And then I'm going to promote it to a channel. We don't talk too much about channels, but channels allows you to manage who has access to which release. So in this case, my first release is going to be promoted to the unstable channel. So only folks that have access to the unstable channel have access to this release. Maybe once I validate this that it works, I'll promote it to another channel where my paying customers have access to. So here's a channel that I promoted this to, the unstable channel. And I'm going to copy the command line uh, here, the existing cluster. And it's two commands. The first one will install a Kubernetes uh, I'm sorry, Cube Control plugin, uh, Cube Control COTS. So when I hit enter, it's first going to do run that curl command to download the, the plugin. And now it's going to run the Kubernetes COTS install command. Prime me for a namespace here. And it's going to go ahead and deploy the admin console. So as I mentioned, this will deploy the, the UI that your admin at your customer will use to manage the, the deployment and, and lifecycle of your application. So this will take a few minutes. Uh, as far as RBAC and so forth, uh, this is a test cluster, so it created the namespace. Uh, when you go into a customer environment, they may give you a namespace that's supported as well. You can also set minimal RBAC. So if your customer has a very tight uh, security, uh, you don't need much permissions to deploy this. It prompt me for a password, so I enter that, and now it's just a matter of waiting for the console to, to come up and ready. So I'm going to actually, um, looks like not all the pods are ready. So I'm going to run, uh, I'm going to use watch to monitor the status of the pods here. So the cost ADM pod, that's a zero of one. That one's, okay, now it's ready. So that's the, the UI now. And as we can see now, in the installation output, we're given uh, a local host port forward to 8800, which is the admin console. So if I go there, I get the UI, enter the password that I selected in the, that I entered. Now I need a license. So we didn't do that yet. So in the vendor portal, when you have a customer that wants to deploy with replicated, you'll need to assign them a license. And here we'll make it an easy license. But license uh, allows you to point to a specific channel. You can do other things. You can tie it into an existing licensing system. You can specify uh, expiration dates. You can also toggle on and off uh, replicated features. But we're going to keep it simple here, use a simple license, put it in the admin console, and I'm going to go ahead with installation. The next screen is going to be that configuration screen. So it's going to be the WordPress blog name here. So I'm just going to enter my blog name, uh, demo blog, and click on continue. Since I removed the pre-flight spec from my release, it will not run any pre-flights. It will just go ahead and deploy the application. If I now switch over to that same command where I'm running wait, I can now see that the other WordPress pods are coming along. So as you can see, there's two pods. There's the uh, uses MariaDB as a database. And then we have the main WordPress pod that is coming up. So MariaDB looks to be a stateful set. And WordPress is just uh, a regular pod, a deployment looks like. So uh, this will take just a few uh, moments to run. It just has to get the database up and running. And once the database is up and running, uh, WordPress will then be up and ready to go. So it just takes a few moments, folks. In the meantime, while we wait, uh, in the admin console, if you go to view files, here's you can kind of analyze what's happening behind the scenes. So in the upstream section are the files that come from the vendor portal, right? When we created the release. So here's the WordPress YAML file that tells us about the uh, Helm chart. And their base kind of gives you a preview of what, how the Helm chart is going to be, you know, templatized or it's going to be deployed. So in the deployment YAML, instead of the templating, we see the actual values, right? And here's where a lot of those uh, fields in the values file get routed to, specifically as environment variables. So if we go here, you can see that there's an environment variable called WordPress blog name, and it correctly has the demo blog value, which is what we entered in the UI. If I switch back to the terminal, looks like everything's up and running. I'll go back to the installation output screen. It tells me to go to port 8080. So I'm going to take that uh, URL, and that should open up WordPress. And it is. And as you can see, the title is demo blog. So it used the, the value from the UI. So this all worked. Uh, and now you have a question maybe, well, how do we handle my images? If you're paying attention, right, we, we've used the WordPress, which has publicly available images. If we look here in the values file, 
um, images are coming from just a, from Docker Hub and they're public. So actually it's not here, it's if you scroll further down here, we'll see right there on line seven, 69 is and 70 is a registry, right? Image and registry. So you may decide that you may have your images that are private, that require your pool secrets, right? It has your, uh, your intellectual property, so they're not public. So when you use replicated, uh, the way we solve that is you can either let us proxy your registry or you can use our registry. In this case, I'm doing a proxy to GCR. But this is any registry that we have access to. If your registry is behind your firewall, then you could use our own registry. But by using either or, now when we deploy the application to the customer environment, we will deploy our secrets. And that secret it will be tied to that license. If you specify an expiration date on that license, the pool secret will expire along with that license. But this also allows us to create air gap bundles. So we mentioned earlier about Helm charts, how they only include the, the templates and the manifests. The images have to ma be managed separately. Well, by giving us access to your uh, registry, we can create air gap bundles that contain your Helm chart and your images. I'm going back to releases here because now I want to talk about updates. How do we consume updates? So updates means we're going to push a new release to the same channel. Uh, I could have a new version of the chart, so I could put it in here. But to keep things simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just map another field. So if we go back to the values file, I'm just going to pick a field here, and I'm going to add another UI field. So let's take the, the WordPress first name on line 111. So just like we did earlier, we're going to um, create a new UI field for it. So under here, uh, we'll just create a new block of text here, similar to the one we have right above it. So we add a name. We'll use the same field name from the values file. And for the title, we'll, we'll enter the, 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 this is the label, remember, the label that we did be displayed to the end user. And now we're going to uh, specify the type. And then we're going to make this required. I want to make it required because I want the user to make sure they enter this before they upgrade to the next version. This question comes up a lot if this is supported. So let's go ahead and, and demonstrate how that works. I'm going to make this required. And uh, just making sure everything else. Oh, i got to do the mapping. So I'm going to go back to the WordPress YAML and enter the templating for the new field I just created. Using the same name as the values uh, field in the values file makes this a lot easier because you do a lot of just a lot of copy paste like this. Okay, so I think uh, that does it. That's all the changes that we're going to make. So uh, we're the what we'll need to do now is uh, save this release. And again, we need to promote it to the channel. And it's based on that license that your end customer has. So when you push a new release, I'll promote a release to the channel that your customer's license is pointing to. That's when they will see the upgrade. So how do they consume upgrades on, the, on their side? So I'll switch over to the admin console. I went to version history. And under here, I can check for updates. So this is going to, again, uh, since my license is pointed to the unstable channel, is querying it to see if there's new update. And as you can see, the text is changing there. It's, it's, it's bringing it down. Uh, your end user can control how they consume updates, by the way. So right here, they can check, for example, um, how often to check for updates. Uh, they can, the default is every four hours, but as you can see, there's many options there. They, can, they could also enable automatic updates as well if they want to do that. So we see our new version, and we see that the version says it's pending config. And that is because we added a configuration field that is required. So it's preventing us uh, from deploying until we fill out this field. And here it is. So I'll enter my name here. And I'll do a save config. And now it will proceed to deploy the upgraded application. So that is how you would handle uh, any updates. In upgrade scenarios, you would simply have a new bundle to upload. So now we see our latest version is up and ready to go. OK. So uh, in summary, uh, as you can see, Replicated fully supports the use of Helm charts. Uh, we help uh, independent software vendors operationalize the support of private customer control environments 
for their Helm-based applications. And stay tuned for more features around Helm. Uh, we have some new exciting features on the, on the customer side to deploy for those that uh, require Helm. So stay tuned for that. Thank you again for watching and enjoy KubeCon.